Tonight's game is Battlecrest. This is a two-player, one, one versus one game. There is an expansion that makes it playable solo. There's another expansion I don't have. This was this was shipped to us by Button Shy. So shout out to Button Button Shy for sending us this game. They sent us the base game and the solo expansion, which also adds two additional playable heroes that you could use in the two-player game. We are using everything from just the base game right now. Basically, the, the, the playing field is a, what is it, one, two, three, four, five, six by one, two, three, four, five, six grid. A six by six grid of cards. So yeah, so like fill in the blanks here. I'm out, I was actually super impressed with the way that they laid this out with only this amount of cards. You've got a six you by can, six grid. <laughs> you can indicate where you are in that grid with only these cards. Yeah, like you're just filling with just in the these blanks. six cards. Like, yeah, wild. It's just that's that's so so smart. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and almost every card in this deck is like there's the, the the gameplay will have us flipping them back and forth, and there's different stuff on the back sides of the cards. Everything's on the start side right now. Uh, the only, yeah, the only exception are our hero cards where there's just a little bit of added information about your hero. I don't have a minion, that's that not back. fair. Yeah, but you have an extra action card. Oh, I do? Yes. Oh. And two more health than me. Oh. So that's, that's how that that's balanced out. that minion's cool. You got he like is. a robot. The basics of how this game is played is you take turns and on your turn you can choose two different actions from the following list. Okay. You can move one or more of your warriors, which in Dustin's case is just his hero. In my case- You gotta rub it in. You gotta rub it in. Hero or minion. So you can move one or more of your warriors one at a time up to their movement value. A minion's movement value is indicated by this icon on the card. Right there, that three, that icon, that is my minion's movement value. Cool. A hero's movement value is the sum of movement values on all of their active action cards. An action card is active if, if it is upright, gotcha. like all of ours are at the start of the game. Gotcha. When we use these cards later, we will tap them like in Magic the Gathering. We'll exhaust them. We'll, we'll exhaust them, not, exactly. We'll, we'll it, is, it, it, it is in the rule book. It says exhaust them. Exhaust, exhaust them. them. You turn them 90 degrees, that means it's exhausted. That means it's no longer active, so you don't get that move value. All right. But if they're all active, that's your move value. So you can move oh. up to that many spaces with your hero when you use the move action. Interesting. Uh, movement is all orthogonal, I believe. If I'm not mistaken. That would make sense to me. Although adjacent, whenever you see the word adjacent, it's any. that's any direction. But movement, I believe, is all orthogonal. I've been seeing that, that theme around in a couple other games. A warrior who moves must finish their movement before another warrior moves. So I couldn't move this guy a couple spaces and then move this guy gotcha, and then go the back to move it. Yeah, you gotcha. gotta finish whatever movement. You don't have to use all of their movement, obviously. Gotcha. Just up to that much. Yeah. Warriors can move through allies, but not through enemies. Warriors may not move through landmarks unless using shortcuts. Shortcuts are these icons printed on the landmarks. What's that mean? That means if you move oh, do they it, yeah. Connect? So if you uh, no 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 no, they don't connect. Oh. It's so if you're if you're here, you can move into this landmark and then immediately go there, there, or there based on that arrow. Does that make sense? Uh, if so you're here, you can't move into it. But if you're here, you can move so only in. the green arrows. Yeah, you just follow the direction here? of the arrow. So that doesn't the no, icon no, no. doesn't do anything. No, no, no. Because it's it's an it, the ingress is here on that icon. So, oh, so it's just so the can, icon. Yeah, not just the based on the icon. Tab thing. No, just based on the icon because those those can be like this is on the bottom gotcha, of the card so over here. Go so one, you can come two, from here, one, two, go up, and then it's it's all one move. One, two. Oh. It's a shortcut. So it's one. one. Oh, okay. Or one. Perfect. Or one. Perfect. Gotcha. Ready to go. That's map. Those are map shortcuts. Otherwise, you cannot move through landmarks. So that's move. 
Good to That's know. one of your four possible actions. You get to choose two different we actions. Can do other things? You get to do two different actions on your turn, so you can't take the move action twice. Gotcha. You can activate one of your active action cards, exhaust it, and then use that card's abilities. Cool. We will talk about all of those abilities once we get done with all of our actions. You can do the prime action, which is to choose one of your active action cards and exhaust it without using any of that card's abilities. Okay. You can exhaust... So that's a whole so, different yeah, action? That's a whole different action to exhaust one of your action cards without taking, doing okay. whatever's on it. Okay. Which you might want to do because, we'll get to this in a second, but when you take the action on a card, uh, the, do the activate action, so say I want to activate this card, I turn turn it sideways and then I do whatever's on the card. This particular action has a thing that says if that icon, that, that crest mm -hmm. is present, it's going to modify the effects of that action. So if these are exhausted, then I have these crests primed and that'll then make that attack that much stronger because it'd be one plus two in that case, just as an example. And you didn't want to attack and or do whatever the other abilities were? Yeah, well, yeah, or maybe I already exhausted them on previous turns. Gotcha. Or something like that, but the, those, that is only modified by exhausted right. action cards. Right. So just having that card there doesn't give me that modifier. It has to be exhausted. Gotcha, yeah. So you can, pr you can activate by tapping and then doing whatever the, the text is, or you can prime by tapping and not doing anything. Two separate actions. Lastly, refocus. That's your last refocus. of your four, the last of your four actions. You can refocus. When you refocus, let's say this was already exhausted. Got it. When you refocus, you take all of your exhausted cards, flip them, and then reactivate them. Put them face up. And which will change whatever the a possible activation text is. It'll change the crest. Basically, it's an entirely different card on the other side. That's cool. Like it. Let's talk about all of those abilities that are printed on those cards. First off, Ten, ability four. targeting. So there's three different possible range icons. Oh, I got it. Okay, cards. I have a you bunch have two, of different you icons. Have, you have two different range icons. The two swords that are on your second and third card there, mm -hmm. those are short range. Got it. That means that the target of that ability must be orthogonal one space away. Okay, not adjacent, but orthogonal one yeah, space. Yeah, not just adjacent, but orthogonal Got one it. space. There's a medium range icon, which you might have on the back side of some of your cards. That's an axe. Oh, I have yeah, it. Yeah, okay, that's part of my ability. I may swap oh, yeah. Akina with a warrior that. in axe range, and then you may so attack two plus. That is medium range. That means the target must be adjacent. Got it. So that could be orthogonal or diagonal. Cool. Love it. Then there is the long range icon, which is the bow, the bow and arrow. And that is, they must be within the that range. number of spaces. Cool. So you've got your first one there has a long range of three. Your second one has, or the, the last card there has a long range of four. four. So three spaces or four spaces away from you. Is this my target count? The, that, yes. So that icon indicates if you can target multiple targets Perfect. with that ability, which the number next to it is how many targets you can target. They all have to be within range, obviously. Right. But, yeah. Okay. Long range abilities, they have to be at least two spaces away. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, I didn't realize that there's a grid on here that actually explains long range movement, and I didn't look at it. You can't oh, really see those. Pack? You can't really see those numbers, but oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. if they're diagonal, they're That's two fine. spaces away. Gotcha. So when it, when it comes to long range calculation, their the diagonals count as two spaces. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, there, that's ability targeting, ability keywords. Let's talk about those. I should have talked about those first. All right. Attack allows the warrior to attack one or more enemies. Pretty self-explanatory. March allows the warrior to move up to the given number of spaces following movement rules. Makes sense. Is this so? This is separate from a normal move action. Yeah. Well, this would be when you activate, activate that card. card. Gotcha. So if if I were to activate this card, oh, I have a march on the back here. There you go. So, okay. so if you activate that card, you get to take. Uh, you get to march move three. 
Whichever warrior, yeah, so one warrior, you get to move up to that number of spaces and then do whatever else is on that card because it's also got an attack action at the bottom. Cool. Force allows the warrior to move any other warrior on the board, what? ally or enemy, up oh. to the given number of spaces. Oh. So if you've got a force move like you do like on two. that particular card, <laughs> you could move... Force. You, two yeah, you could, you could first move one of my units to oh. plus that many. Four yeah. range away, though, is my ability on range on that guy. This follows movement rules, except that the target can be forced through through any warrior, not just allies. Mm -hmm. So if you're using a force action on somebody, you can force them through. But you can't normally one of go your through units. an enemy. Normally, you wouldn't be able gotcha. to go through an enemy, but gotcha. yeah. When you launch an attack on somebody, you announce who you're attacking with and at least one valid target based on the ability targeting rules that we already talked about with your, with that's within range, basically. Cool. Then you also announce the total attack value, which pay attention to your ability modifiers, right. which are those crest icons we talked about, crests and crest bonuses. So if you've got something that's tapped, that means that that crest is available to modify other cards' abilities. That's your total attack value. Cool. Then comes the, the, the defense step. If the attack targets a hero, the defending player may exhaust one and only one of their active action cards to defend with the defense value of that card, which mm. is printed in the bottom right corner. Cool. Plus any modifiers, plus any map bonuses. So, we haven't talked about that. No, we have not. All of these landmarks have, like, effects. Map bonuses. Whenever a warrior is touching a map bonus icon... Oh, whenever you're touching that icon, specifically. So, that means, yeah, if you are there, you're touching that icon. Gotcha. Then that means you get that map bonus. It's added automatically, it is not optional. And then that landmark card is flipped over. Something that I, uh, to point oh. out, this map bonus is inactive. That's showing what the map bonus is in that position on the other side of the card. But it's inactive. So if you're here, you don't get that bonus. Oh. If you're here, you do get this bonus. Okay. And when you get that bonus, you'll immediately flip the card to this side. And then that one's active. And then that one's active now. So that could also change other stuff on the card, too. Gotcha. All those possible icons. This one is attack. There's two of them, so that means you get a plus two what? to your attacks oh, if, so that are initiated okay. from this space when gotcha. it's active. Gotcha. Or when it's there. So that's the attack. Defense looks like a shield. Do we have any of those? Yeah, over here. There's a shield. That's plus one to defense if you're in this space. There's a long range icon on some, like this one. That's a plus one to your range abilities. Cool. Only your long range abilities. Not plus one to your to your long range attack or to your range to anything to anything that has a long range. Okay, so it'll be your. It's range. a plus one. It's not. It does not affect short range or medium range icons. Right, because they're only the, the long sword range. And yeah, the yeah, not the axe. sword of the battle axe. Yeah. Just the yeah, just gotcha. the bow. This one affects movement. That's a plus one to move to your movement value. So if you initiate a move from that space, you'd get plus one. It's only for stuff that starts from that location. Got it. And then this one is force. It's plus, oh. it's plus one movement value to force actions that gotcha. are initiated from this space. Gotcha. Oh, I didn't talk about map hazards. Those are, as soon as that icon becomes active, uh, yeah, I don't. I want to. Bad things. I want to know what that is then before I. When a warrior that move. enters a space touching an active hazard, or if an inactive hazard touching a warrior becomes active, that warrior takes one damage. Oh, that's a. Hazards are not attacks and cannot be defended against. If a player action or ability triggers a hazard, immediately resolve the damage and then continue. Back to attack resolution. We start with, you declare the attack, you. Declare what your total attack value is. Uh, the defender, if it's a hero, can exhaust one card to add that defense value. You'll also get any map bonuses if you happen to be next to a shield on the map. 
and you may defend with an action card that has a defense value of zero if you want to. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know why you would want you to. Want I mean, maybe exhaust just to exhaust the card. The thing, yeah, probably. maybe just to exhaust the card. Yeah. yeah. That's if the attack targets a hero. If the attack targets a minion, oh, then this they always slow. defend with the defense value printed on the card. Got it. Got two, which sir. is two for rig. Rig's going to die, just so you know. Then you move to the damage step. If the target warrior defends, you subtract their defense value, if any, from the attack value. Okay. The remaining number is how much damage they take. Got it. If it's uh, a minion, if a minion takes any damage and they're on their start side, they move over to their wounded side. Uh -huh. If they're already on their wounded side and they take any damage, they dead. They dead. Cool. They gone. Love it. If it's a hero, you track your health with your heart card. This is a, a, a very clever way of doing this yeah, because there, like this a lot. there's no room for tokens since it's a wallet game. Yep. So you have a health card that is in position on the table with all of your action cards in a separate row. Right now my health is at 10. If I take two damage, I will move it two spots to the right. Now my damage is at eight. If it gets down to this position, then I flip the card and move it back over here to show that I'm at five health. Makes sense? Makes sense to me. That's how you track your health. Oh, also the wounded side of your health card has a crest. So if you're wounded, oh, you you've got a crest. Thing. That's fun. Star abilities. Some of your cards will have a star on them. Some warriors and landmarks have star-powered abilities that require a star to use. So... I have one. I do too. What? There's Not a, fair. There's a star-powered ability. We also... Dustin pointed out earlier that there are star-powered abilities on these landmark cards. Yeah, All of them those? right now. So, if you activate... If you choose on your turn to do the activate action and you activate a card that has a star, that means you get to use a star ability that's available to you. What? Which ones are available to me? Your hero's star ability would be available to you. Oh, well, I know that. Or what else? Or any uh, landmark. Landmark cards each have a star powered ability which can only be used by heroes that are within short range. Yeah, gotcha. that landmark. So, gotcha. be if you're diagonal. orthogonal, if you're orthogonally adjacent to a landmark, then you can use. Cool. So I would have a access landmark to both ability. of these. Yes. At that point, you only get to use one. Right. For right. each star. I get the option. One for each star that is activated. Gotcha. Cool. When a player activates an action card with one or more stars, each star that is not skipped. Oh, that's another thing. When you activate a card, if you are using the activate ability to exhaust that card, you. You can't skip everything on the card, but you can skip one. Like, you can skip some actions that are on there. Oh, so you can't activate it if... You can't You can't do take the activate action on a card if you're not using anything on it. Right. But you, can then, use, you can use the prime action so instead. So some of them might have three actions then? I think only up to two. And you can skip one? But you can skip one. Okay. You do have to take them in order. Okay, but you would have to do at least one of the actions. You would have to do at least okay. one, yeah. But uh, And you can take okay. both. Okay. When a player activates an action card with one or more stars, each star that is not skipped must immediately be used to resolve a star-powered ability. Either the star-powered ability of your hero or the star-powered ability of a landmark that your hero is adjacent to. Orthogonal. Or orthogonally adjacent to. Right. Wonderful. Ranged landmark abilities calculate range from the hero's location, Makes not sense. the landmark's Makes location. Sense. Each unique star-powered ability can only be used once per turn, even if an action card grants multiple stars. That is the basics of how this game is played. Hey, thanks for hanging out. If you want to spend more time with us, do us a favor. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and most importantly, head on over to twitch.tv slash bnbtabletop and give us a follow there. We play board games live every Sunday night at 5 p.m. Pacific time on a show we call The Board and Barrel. And we like to keep things interactive. You guys can influence what happens throughout the course of a game with our buff and nerf house rules. You can also make predictions on how things are going to pan out, play virtual bingo for a chance to win a free board game of your own, and heckle us and stuff from the chat. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you Sunday night.